So one of the studies that's really fascinating was a direct comparison between umbilical cord derived MSCs, so mesenchymal stem cells, versus fat derived MSCs. And they put these MSCs next to cancer cells because there's some reports of stem cells exacerbating existing cancer. So, so they, they did this study. So they put it next to cancer cells, a very, very um, virulent form of uh, brain cancer, glioblastoma. So they put it next to cancer cells, both in a petri dish and on an animal's body. In both cases, the fat derived stem cells made the cancer grow, but the umbilical cord derived stem cells make the cancer shrink and go away. So that's how drast drastically they're different, which is why I, you know, after all the search, um, you know, just on existing research, I just felt that is my obligation to provide people not only the most potent form of therapy, but also the safest. So that's kind of the, um, you know, the different stem cell type. If people are interested, they should look at my YouTube video, Are All MSCs Created Equal? This is a lecture I've given in various conferences, um, you know, to, to clinicians and, um, in scientists just to show people what research has shown because it seems like people are so set in their own field you know i do bone marrow stem cells i do you know umbilical core stem cells but they're not looking across the field to see really what's the best what's going on so when i came onto the field i just want to give people the best it doesn't matter which type i just want to make sure that that i know what i'm i'm doing and then I realized that no one knows about all these research, so I better present it. And that's how it came about. So so that's a 40 minute lecture. Are all MSCs created equal? If you're interested in research, you can you know look at all the research I'm citing. It's all about research and all about statistics, um, not, not about my opinion. So after this comparison, that's how I came to the conclusion that umbilical core stem cells, at least for now, is the best form of cells, um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen five years from now. I'm, you know, I'm following up on the research. So we don't know, but at least right now it's still the best. Um, so, so that's kind of the, um, you know, one of the big myths <laughs> about uh, stem cells, you know, you know, the, um, the, actually I talked about probably a few, you know, people think your own stem cells better. That's one of the myths. Another myth is that, that we're killing babies either by destroying embryos or using fetuses and uh, I, I don't know anybody using fetus cells in the United States. There are some um, labs, especially Ukraine, they're well known for using fetal cells. You know, what I've, I've learned is that a lot of Russian women would go to these clinics to abort the babies and get paid to abort their babies so they can sell the, the baby, you know, to be used as stem cell donors. And um, the Ukraine clinics are, they were, you know, it's not that sophisticated. They grind up the baby and grind up the fetus and then infuse to people. So that to me is not, you know, the, the kind of scientific way to approach stem cell therapy, you know, to just grind something up. Um, there's a lot of potential problems. You know, when you, you know, have a full baby, there's a lot of adult uh, expression of, you know, fully grown, uh, cells with their full surface markers and that can cause rejection. Um, so you really need to extract real stem cells from them. So, um, yeah, so that's the, a couple of the myths that I'm covering. Thank you so much. That's very, very intriguing to hear about that. And I think misinformation is one of the most, uh, potent ways of not being able to develop and grow as a, a humanity. So yes, you're right. You need to repeat and keep repeating the truth <laughs> so that the non-truth can start to move to the side where it belongs. Right. I want to know a little bit about what kinds of therapies you administer in your practice and what you use them for. I rely a lot on intravenous therapy because I think there's uh, probably the most evidence um, I do a lot of local joint injections and local tissue injections and including facial rejuvenation, hair restoration, you know, penile, you know, vaginal injections. So I can do all that. But the mainstay is intravenous um, because even for local t issues, and I've treated a lot of local issues through IV injections because the cells 
have the capability to travel to the place where they there's a lot of inflammation and injury. And not only that, they do interact with you, your immune system, which is why they're so powerful in autoimmune diseases. And there's so much evidence to treat all sorts of autoimmune diseases because they modulate your immune system.